Hello, Chart Watchers, and welcome to this Friday, July 11th, Market Watchers Live Show with your hosts, Aaron Swenlin, and today, Mary Ellen McGonigal. Tom is out, so let's go ahead and get started with our market update and see what's going on. At this point, we can see that uh, we're having a decent day here on the Dow, up about half of a percent currently. And I'm noticing all of these PMOs. I think that's a real interesting uh, look that we don't normally get. S&P 500 is making all-time highs again, up 0.21%. NASDAQ at this point is up 0.38% or 30 points. Russell 2000 still really not participating in the way I would like to see, but it is up today almost 0.6%. TSX, Canadian markets, are down on the day about 20 points, which is about 0.19%. And you can see we're kind of triple topping here. I, you know, I'd be a little concerned that 20-day EMA though looks like it might hold this time around. Treasury yields are rising currently at 2.125%. The VIX is lower right now, reading at 12.53. Industrials are really the leader today, uh, right now up over 1%. And this is in due large part to the truckers index, which I know is up a I think it's up over 4% right now. Uh, of those movers, uh, we can see in the industrial is we've got YRCW. It's making a move and a breakout. And notice that PMO is starting to turn up, just like the truckers industry group. And JB Hunt also having a great day. Nice breakout from a declining tops trend line, PMO turning up. And finally, Dow Holdings. This is the, I believe, the most active, at least it was about five minutes ago, in the Dow industrials and making a nice breakout also from a declining tops trend line in the short term. Still looking to break out above this um, a little bit longer term uh, declining tops trend line. All right, Mary Ellen, it is yeah. the women for today. Yes, it is. Oh, I'm doing wonderful. How are you? We I am great. Uh, did you have a nice flight home on uh, Wednesday? I did. A little bit delayed, but uh, got me back in one piece and uh, back in the saddle here. Yeah, that was a great trip up to Seattle. Got to, as you've said in the past, the mothership. <laughs> we, got to, <laughs> we got to go to corporate headquarters and uh, it was it was wonderful. Great yes. visit. and. Oh, well, I loved being able to do a couple of shows with you, including our new Chartwise Women show, which happens to air on Wednesdays at noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern time. Sure, we, we got did. to do that in the same room. So that was actually quite exciting. Was let's good. go ahead and I'm going to get us started on our schedule. The upcoming schedule is pretty exciting here. We've got Martin Pring coming in next week. On Wednesday, Julie Stekempener will be with us on Thursday, and we will follow that up with Relative Strength Week. And we've got some uh, great names coming in to talk to you about Relative Strength in particular, to include Mark Chaikin, Gaddis Rose, and of course, our very own Arthur Hill and Julia Stekempener. However, for today, it is what's hot, what's not day. So Mary Ellen will be giving you the scoop. 10 and 10, our first symbol is gonna be Garden Health, GH. And then our final two segments are going to be tops and bottoms and happy hour. <laughs> so I'm going to get it started with some technical news and headlines right now. All right, we're going to start with key economic reports. And uh, right now, we only had one economic report come out today, and that was the consumer credit uh, key economic report. And it was very interesting in that it was nearly identical to last month's gain of 13.1 or 13 billion, and uh, which is what was expected, uh, a little bit higher at 13.1 billion. Uh, what uh, the economists are saying is that this is really a bright spot right now for the economy with uh, business investment and manufacturing looking somewhat weaker. But when you see this expansion in the consumer credit, it's a positive sign for growth. Uh, so so uh, economists are liking that. And really, it's uh, they're saying that higher incomes are what led to more consumer spending and that household borrowing was actually modest and modestly relative to the income and uh, among their high credit scores. So really the household borrowing came from, you know, it wasn't 
a huge increase in that borrowing, but the borrowing that did occur was basically among those with those higher credit scores. All right, let's move on to some key earnings. And uh, what I'm going to look at right now is Infosys Limited. Infosys did report earnings on uh, as expected. I'm going to go ahead and take you to that chart so we can look a little more closely at what the results are. And right now they are quite good. Uh, the um, analysts were very happy with it and investors in turn are very happy with it. So we could see the PMO pretty much got yanked right back upward above the signal line and momentum is certainly moving to the upside. Notice that nice move on the OBV, the on balance volume. And the reason we're seeing that with the OBV for those maybe aren't familiar with it so much. Every time you have an up day, you take all of the volume for that day and add it to the reading from the previous day. So we have two days where we had very nice volume to the upside, and that has brought up the OBV. But after all of these declining days, we haven't quite made a new top. So that's pretty much what we're looking at here. But look at that scooter making a nice move here. Certainly a nice breakout here for Infosys. If we look at the weekly chart, give you a peek, you can see really, really nice breakout. And honestly, I think that if you look at it, we we were starting to see a little bit of deterioration here on the weekly chart as that PMO, as you can see there in the thumbnail, had just started to turn down. So I like this PMO buy signal though that has lined up. If we still see this sort of movement at the end of the close today, uh, that would mean this PMO reading would go final and we would be getting a new buy signal on Infosys. All right, um, let's go ahead and I, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about Infosys because shares have risen about 12% since January and, you know, about 8% in the last 12 months. I'm going to look at a little bit longer term chart as well for Infosys. And here you have it. A nice breakout, as I said, and you can see that really on the monthly chart for Infosys, we we're on a buy signal and still are continuing with a pretty nice margin of the PMO between it and its signal line. All right, I wanted to look at just a few of the top stocks on our dashboard here. It's such an excellent way to get a peek at what's really going on here in the market. So I want to start, honestly, I'm going to start with the Dow. And these are your top 10. So these are the percentages moving up here. And that is why you're seeing an over half percent move in the Dow Jones Industrials. If we take a, um, a peek at the candle glance for these top 10, again, I like to have my uh, candle glance set up with my PMO and my color system that I like. Uh, these are three, I believe I made these three month charts. I'm gonna show you where my candle glance is. So basically if you wanna do the same thing and have your own candle glance set up, just set up your chart exactly how you want it to look in your candle glance and then name it candle glance, your chart style. And when you do that, when you go into that candle glance, you're going to always see the same thing. Uh, a little uh, power tip for those of you out there. I also set up a couple of different ones. And then that way, depending on what I want to look at in the candle glance, I can simply click on it and replace that original candle glance with that chart style. So just a little bit of extra info in there for you. All right. Let's go back to that dashboard and those top 10. And as I said, we're looking at the top 10 up on the Dow. So with that PMO, I want to look at which ones are already on a winning streak, having that momentum, which ones are starting to switch over. I like the Caterpillar set up here on the PMO. And it's coming with a nice short-term breakout from a declining trend, which it has popped right off of that 20, 50-day EMAs. We're now trading well above the five-day EMA. And look what's happening now with the PMO. It's starting to bottom and move back up. And it is not what I would call 
overbought. We can see that re you know back here in October we saw a PMO that got up close to the three um, a three reading, and then of course we ended up at minus five shortly thereafter. That I would say is a stretch. Um, really, it appears that minus three to positive three really is that. Um, is the range. So I think we still have room to take on some momentum. You can see that we have what could be considered a flag formation here. So I, I like that quite a bit. All right, I'm gonna look, uh, let's see, I had marked up, yes, we're not quite to the scooter mover of the day, but we will get there, I promise. So I'm gonna go right back to our uh, predefined, uh, the top, let's go back here. Yes, let's look at that Dow. We're gonna, we looked at the Dow, let's look at the S&P 500 very quickly here. And the percent up for the S&P 500, as you can see, some of these are those industrials that we already saw. Let's go ahead and take a peek at that candle glance. And again, let's see what's going on with those PMOs. We're seeing that they are active today and they're making these big moves, but does it look like that momentum could be sustained? Uh, right now, just right off the bat, I'm looking at raw stores. That looks fabulous. Look at that nice breakout. Of course, we are looking at an uh, almost 3% move, but we have a PMO that is now going into that buy signal. You can see we were already getting confirmation on that momentum as it had bottomed and started to head up. And look at what was already going on with volume. Now, while it was a little bit under the 50-day average for volume, on raw stores, it still was solid up days for a week, a little over a week, and we're continuing on with that on this breakout above that June high. Very nice look there. All right, and then others here on our top uh, movers right now in the S&P 500, I would say would be, um, I'm, again, I'm looking at the PMOs, that's what's really interesting, interesting to me right now. And I would say uh, J.B. Hunt is looking pretty interesting here. Alrighty. And I say that it does look like we're getting a bottom that's putting, getting put in. I'm gonna go ahead and annotate this a little bit for us. And then we're gonna go into our scooter mover of the day. And there are lows right there. And if I drag this up, we are looking at pretty much a rising trend channel. I think I would give it credit for that. <coughs> Excuse me. And we haven't quite moved above that yet, but it looks like we're making our way. That five-day EMA is crossing above the 20-day EMA. And again, these tops above the signal line, and we're getting rising bottoms on the PMO. I would look for that breakout. And you can see if we just look at the recent overhead resistance based on the lows back here, and if we raise it up and look at the tops back here, uh, really it's lining up that we're getting a, a trading right now above that overhead resistance, but I would really wanna watch and see if we can get back, uh, if we can get a breakout from that rising trend channel. All right, let's go ahead and get our scooter mover of the day. And our scooter mover of the day is United Rentals. It is in the industrials, which are having a good day, so not surprised to see it near the top of those scooters. And I did put here on the chart, and I'll include this chart in tonight's Market Watchers Live recap, but it has how the scooter is calculated right here for you. And notice that it is mostly long-term and medium-term. That actually, of that ranking, takes up 90% of what we're looking at. And so when you're starting to see these moves in the scooters, it's not always necessarily because you're getting an over 3% move like we're seeing today. But I like to look at this. I think we were already getting a hint that we might get this breakout. I was looking at just in the very short term, a descending wedge, and we're getting the breakout from that. Um, but you can see as we were descending here, the PMO was starting to lose a little bit of its uh, credibility here as it was starting to top. But look at the OBV bottoms. If you compare the bottom price bottoms to these OBV bottoms, uh, 
it's, you know, the price bottoms were pretty much even while the bottoms on that OPV were starting to rise. And that is a positive divergence. If you want to go a little bit more intermediate term, look at this chart, you could see there is a pennant or flag formation that could be forming. And that is your scooter mover of the day, United Rentals URI. All righty, let's go ahead and move in and take a look at some of these upgrades and downgrades today. And the first stock that we're going to be looking at here is AEP. This is American Electric Power, a utility stock. And we can see it's really not responding much to this upgrade. Utility stocks in general have really lagged the broader markets over the last two weeks, but it is sitting quite nicely. The RSI is positive. It's finding support and an upward trending 10 day simple moving average. And then your MACD is poised to have that black line up through the red. That would be a bullish action there. So uh, that is the first one. Awful lot of bank stocks were upgraded today. And I will tell you, earnings season is due to start next week. And it is going to begin as usual with a number of bank stocks. So when you see these bank stocks being upgraded going into earnings, that's actually a bullish sign. The first name here is Deutsche Bank DB. Of course, this is a European, very large bank. And we can see the stock's up 2% on the upgrade. The RSI never really got negative. It just bounced around that net neutral and is poised to turn positive. It is turning positive. Your MACD up here in positive territory as well. Uh, despite the gap up, the stock still has work to do. It has this downward trending 200 day simple moving average that it would need to overcome before turning truly bullish. Let's take a look. Another large cap stock that got upgraded today. This is Altria Group, formerly Philip Morris. And we can see the stock has been in a real downtrend here for the last several months. Many of these tobacco companies are suffering. Their sales are declining in the face of other uh, leisure activity for individuals. But the stock is responding nicely. It's up about 1%. It's finding resistance right now at this downward trending 50 day simple moving average i would look for a break above that for the stock to advance higher the rsi is positive macd not quite up above that net neutral so it still has a bit of work to do and another large stock that uh cap stock that's due to report actually next week this is morgan stanley ms and uh the stock was upgraded it's actually in it period here where it is reversing this May downtrend that we saw in a number of stocks, uh, gapping up almost 1% today on the upgrade. Your RSI is positive. MACD poised to break up above that net neutral, also in positive. But for now, we're really just marking time. It's in a bit of a trading zone over the last two weeks. We'll see how they respond to their earnings. Another upgrade is Stitch Fix. Goldman Sachs upgraded the stock. It surged initially on the news, but it is pulling back a bit. I would like to see the stock break up above this green 10-day simple moving average in order for the stock to potentially advance higher. Your RSI is below this 50. Also would like to see that break back up in a bullish fashion above that 50. And your MACD is trending downward in positive territory. So we do still have a little bit of work to do before the stock can advance further on that Goldman upgrade. SNAP is uh, Snapchat, another upgrade on the day. And we can see that the stock is gapping up uh, about one and a half percent, continuing in its very bullish uptrend here. Uh, on the downgrade side, we can take a look. There were a lot of bank stocks that were downgraded. And that is not good, particularly, as I mentioned, we're going into earnings season, uh, but they're not really getting hit. This is Fifth Third Bank that was downgraded. We can take a look at CMA, which is Comerica, another large bank stock that did get downgraded. And this one really is not doing so well originally. Uh, the stock is very much in a confirmed downtrend. Uh, but again, these downgrades, interestingly, are not damaging these stocks. So that actually is good news. Again, they are a number of these. Wells Fargo was also downgraded today. They are due to report next week. And that is it for upgrades and downgrades. We will be right back with what's hot and what's not. 
The Chart Watchers newsletter features expert technical commentary about the current market from some of the industry's leading technical analysts. See what's really happening in the markets through their eyes and gain an edge in your own investing. The newsletter is packed full of insightful and educational articles intended to help you become a better investor. Whether you are brand new to charting or a seasoned technical analyst, each edition will provide a wealth of informative content. It's the best way to stay informed on all the latest news, events, updates, and additions here at StockCharts.com. Whether it's a new feature or blog, an upcoming conference, or a special sale, you'll hear it first in the Chart Watchers newsletter. We are back. Let's go ahead and take a look with what's hot and what's not. And this is a segment where we are focused on those stocks for the week that are outpacing the broader market. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and take a look at some of these stocks because as usual, there will be themes within these various groups. There are sound reasons why they are outperforming. The first group that we're gonna take a look at is uh, data storage. And we're looking at Western Digital, WDC. Take a look at this outperformance. And it's not just this week. We can see that this stock has had a very healthy downtrend reversal. And it has everything to do with global uh, memory chips. And these companies are reducing the supply. And we are anticipating demand for these chips to increase. It's been pushed out because of the trade wars to potentially next year. But the outlook does look promising for these data storage stocks. Western Digital's up 13.5% for the week. Take a look because I like to see when the shorter term simple moving average crosses above longer term, in this case, 10 day crossing up above the 50 and 200 day simple moving average. That's a bullish, um, sorry, a golden cross, very bullish. We can see the RSI is now up here above this overbought area, which is very simply indicating that you can anticipate a pullback at some point in time. It can remain above this overbought period for some time. And realistically, we are still very much in a confirmed uptrend with this stock. Let's take a look at another data storage stock that reported earnings uh, back at the end of June. This is Micron, a very big bellwether stock within this space. And a very similar pattern we can see, this is that gap up on earnings and the stock has continued to advance after about a one week period where it digested this gap up here, it moved in a sideways fashion. Uptrend has since been renewed. Take a look at this volume. You like to see when a stock breaks out of a flat base. You like, like to see that occur on volume, very bullish. RSI in this case is also up here in this overbought area, but again, it can stay there. Uh, these data storage stocks really are looking quite bullish. Uh, let's take a look at another one that is also in this space in the uh, networking. This is Cisco. The stock, we can see here that it did turn down in May with the broader markets, but since then we have had higher lows and the stock is very much in an uptrend. The MACD during this entire period remained positive and unlike other stocks during May, Cisco had a super nice rally. It really was counter uh, to the broader markets decline, very bullish. We can see it's now breaking out to new highs, which certainly gives the stock more room to advance. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to another area that has been doing well of late. It certainly had a period where these stocks struggled, and that would be semiconductor stocks. Let's go ahead and take a look at the ETF for semiconductors, and you'll see how these stocks have, in fact, been outpacing just a bit here. Uh, pulled back last week, but is are rebounding quite nicely this week. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at some of the semiconductors that are outpacing even more than uh, their index. And the first one is IPHI. This is Infi Corp. And we can see the real clear cut out performance in this stock. It has really taken off. It's up about 12.5% 
on the week. I would argue it is extended here. The stock is really, you can just eyeball it. You can see the position of the current price relative to this 10 day simple moving average. And there's really quite a bit of real estate in there. So I would argue the stock would need a pullback but very clearly there is a confirmed uptrend in place. You can see that this MACD, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, this is the MACD trending upward very positively. RSI, again, up here, you can see that it is overbought. Let's go back here to this February period, which was another air time when this stock had a very, very healthy uptrend. Just taking you to this overbought position and what you can be on the lookout for, this shaded, it's simply advising or telling you that at some point in time, the stock may pull back. But as long as this RSI stays above this 50, really you're fine. You can stay with the stock. It's when it breaks down below key moving averages and below the 50 on that RSI that it would be concerning. So we certainly have a couple of other semiconductor stocks that we can take a look at. And I will tell you the next two stocks I'm gonna be sharing with you, they have everything to do with the data storage stocks that we just looked at. I talked about memory chips and the supply is being reduced. LSCC uh, provides equipment, memory equipment suppliers. So when you see the data storage stocks move up, you will see semiconductor stocks that provide uh, services to them also in an uptrend. So this is Lattice Semiconductor, LSCC. We can see the stock has really outpaced the broader markets this week. It's up about 10% on the week. And it is another stock where I would argue it is extended. I would look for a pullback. We can go back here. Uh, the stock is a bit just touching into that overbought territory. So <clears throat> Again, a confirmed uptrend, I would look for a pullback, like the fact that it's hitting a new high in price that is bullish. And we can take a look at another semiconductor stock that is a memory equipment supplier. It's in the same space as Lattice. That's applied material, A-M-A-T. And we can see it's not outperforming quite as much. I'll tell you, it's up about five and a half percent on the week, poised to break out of this two week base. So the stock, if it were to hit a new high on volume, break out of that base, it would be quite bullish. And it's really kind of stair stepping its way to new highs. But I will tell you fundamentally, the dynamics are sound as far as the trade war, potentially, those, certainly those tensions are reduced. So these are the kind of stocks that are going to benefit. Uh, moving on to another area that outpaced this week, and that's going to be the home builders. And the home builders really have a number of good dynamics in their favor. Certainly low interest rates would play into that. And Aaron talked earlier about uh, consumer credit and consumer uh, continuing to spend. This is MDC. The stock is up 14% on the week. Now, let me take you to this gap up here that we saw on Monday. This is when management came out. They offered bullish guidance. Their new home orders increased 32%. They have a backlog. So the stock powered to new highs. Look at this volume. When you see that kind of volume and a stock spikes upward, oftentimes you may think you missed the move, but this is institutions they want in. This is a company that's guiding higher. The outlook is positive. They're due to report their earnings at the end of this month. So near term, we can see the RSI is a bit over bought. Your MACD certainly is in positive territory. So realistically, you would look for a pullback. You can go back historically to other periods and times where the stock gapped up. You certainly would not want that much of a pullback, but uh, certainly a little one would uh, make this stock a bit more attractive over the near term as a buy. Uh, we can look at some of these other housing stocks because oftentimes when a larger company within the space comes out with bullish guidance, you'll see other stocks in the space also respond positively. LGIH is a smaller one. It's a regional home builder. But I picked this one because not only is it outperforming for the week, it's also emerging very nicely out of this base. This is about a one, actually a five-week 
base. So ideally, we would like to see this stock break out to a new high. We are seeing a nice little pickup here on the volume. The RSI and that MACD are both positive. And then we can take a look at one other large home builder that is also on the move this week. This is NVR, and this stock actually has broken out of this base. It's a little bit of a shorter base, about a three week, but it's breaking out two new highs. So very dynamically bullish. The RSI is positive up above that 50. MACD, we just had that crossover, the black line up through the red. Take a look at that volume. And that again is what you want to see. It's telling you that investors are interested and it very well could propel the stock higher. Another area that really outpaced this week is going to be healthcare insurance provider stocks. So as we drill down, uh, I can give you a bit in the way of insight. This is Cigna. The stock is up about 8 9% actually for the week. Take a look at this gap up. Has everything to do with its news related. Trump, he withdrew his proposal to abolish the rebates that uh, drug makers make to these pharmacy benefit managers. And uh, really it has propelled a number of these healthcare providers higher. The reason is because they own those rebate uh intermediaries, if you will. A large part of their revenue is sourced from there. So Trump leaving them alone is bullish. What I will say though, this stock is still has not quite reversed this downtrend. We can see this 200 day simple moving average trending downward. I would need to see a break above that to give this stock really room to run. We do have other bullish outside characteristics, however, with this RSI trending upward above that 50. Now, of course, near term, it is looking a little bit overbought, but we can see the MACD had that positive crossover also heading up positively. But again, we have not quite reversed this very long-term downtrend. This, of course, the beginning of this year, a lot in the way of headwinds. Trump is just really uh, wants to reduce drug costs. So these stocks have been in the crosshairs as far as investors, the uncertainty causing them to sell. Anthem is another healthcare insurance provider. Now this one is quite a bit more bullish in its uh, attractiveness. It has broken above all of these key simple moving averages. We can see this red 50 day poised to cross up above this 200 day and that is called a golden cross bullish. We can see this gap up yesterday, huge volume, and it is advancing even further today. So of the two, we were looking at Cigna and now Anthem. I will say Anthem is certainly more bullish simply because it is not only just above these moving averages, but it's also adding to yesterday's big move. And we did get quite a bit and we're getting even more in the way of volume that MACD black line up through the red. We can take a look at one more in this healthcare insurance provider. That's UNH, big bellwether, a large component within the Dow. And we can see that same dynamic gaps up. This one is also more bullish. It's now above these simple moving averages, has more room to run, if you will, with your outside indicators also looking quite bullish. I'm going to move on to a different area where we saw a lot of outperformance this week. And uh, realistically, we could probably spend uh, the rest of the show on it because so many stocks are in very bullish positions. What I'm going to do now is take us to just a couple of those communication stocks that are up for the week. This stock, Roku, has been really quite powerful for some time now, and it did pull back. Now, I'm bringing this up because I want to point this dynamic out to you when you see stocks that are uh, really outpacing the broader markets. And this is that May period. Most stocks suffered in May. When you see a stock that is bucking that downtrend, super bullish. This is all about the company coming out with earnings market likes it, stock continues up. It did falter here at the end of June, but this is your buying opportunity on this pullback. And I did write an article about it uh, last last weekend in Chart Watchers newsletter when these stocks pullbacks, and I'm 
pointing you toward it because this stock was a big outperformer. It was an outperformer for a reason, and these fundamental dynamics did not go away. This was quite simply profit taking. The stock pulls back to an upward trending 50 day simple moving average and takes off. So that is the kind of dynamic that is really quite bullish. You do want to see that. I'm going to take us over to some of these consumer stocks, consumer discretionary that are outperforming the broader markets. And the first name that we are going to take a look at, of course, is Bellwether Amazon. And this stock, we can see that it has really been uh, really doing quite well. There are a lot of people, I'm going to go ahead and pull up the weekly on this because what we are on the prowl for with Amazon is a breakout of this very long base. We want to see the stock break out two new highs. For those of you not familiar, when you're looking at stocks breaking out of bases, the longer term that base and then the subsequent breakout are, and by longer term, I mean this peak in price is taking us back to last September. This is about a nine, 10 month base. Your advance out of that base once it breaks two new highs can really be significant. So the longer your base, the longer your, your advance out of that base. And so we are very, very close to hitting that. But the stock's up about three and a half percent for the week. Very bullish, one of the better performers in the FANG space. But we can move on and take a look at some of these other outperformers in the consumer. Consumers, uh, Costco, COST, big box store that really has been doing quite well. It's up 4% on the week. I'm going to take us back to a daily chart so we can drill down and look at some of the near term dynamics on this stock. And I will tell you, given that 4% advance on the week, a lot of these larger stocks tend not to have moves of this significance. Uh, it is near-term extended. I talked about this earlier where the price relative to this upward trending 10-day simple moving average, very simply, a lot of real estate between the price and that 10-day. We can see back here, it is overbought. It can remain in that position for some time, but look for a pullback. You're going to want to pick your spot. This stock had a really nice advance here in June, pulled back very naturally and orderly to that 10-day simple moving average. I would look for that pullback for a buying opportunity in Costco. And then one other stock in this space, consumer, I wanted to point out to you because it is giving the appearance of a downtrend reversal. This is Ollie. They are a discount retailer, O-L-L-I. They are on a tear with their growth prospects. They're opening new stores. This is decline was all about earnings. The company came out, they guided a uh, a bit lower, their same store sales were off. So naturally the uh, investors, uh, they can see the stock came under distribution and fell into a very defined downtrend here as it continued to break below these simple moving averages. But take a look at this action today. We're not quite out of the woods. I talk about this where we have now a downward trending 50 day simple moving average. I would look for a break above that to truly be a reversal. But right now we're trading at about 87. The stock could easily advance up to that 94 before finding resistance. RSI poised to turn positive. MACD just now having that black line up through the red and bullish fashion would like to see it break above that net neutral zero before getting in. But I would put this on your radar because this is a well-liked uh, stock by many institutions. Uh, it's a good growth story. So we want to see that downtrend reversal. And then actually speaking of downtrend reversals, I'm going to take us over to payment processing stocks. And the first name that we can look at uh, was a real pioneer in this space years ago. This is Square, SQ is the ticker symbol. And the stock really sat out. We can see taking us back to March, not only was it in a downtrend, but really in a go nowhere environment for about a month. This week, and I will say on Tuesday in particular, it woke up, it was up about six and a quarter percent. And you can see the advance is continuing. So we're up about 12% 
on the week. The growth prospects here are huge. I've been waiting for this stock to come to life, if you will, and it has. Again, a bit extended near term, but very interesting looking, the fact that it is joining its peers this has been a very hot area of the market. So let's take a look at PayPal. This is another payment processing company that is having a good week. And not just that they're having a good week um, sharing these stocks with you because their uptrend potential still looks good. So we can see PayPal broke out of about a two and a half week base up to new highs. We're getting a nice pickup there in the volume, stock finding uh, upward trending simple moving averages, both near and longer term, your RSI and your MACD are very positive looking. So, and also, as I mentioned, it's in a very vibrant area of the market. There's quite a bit of uh, traction with these stocks, with mobile payments taking place globally. Uh, this last one in this space is PaySign, P-A-Y-S, a bit smaller as far as a market cap, but equally powerful as far as finding support at this upward trending 10-day simple moving average, a very confirmed uptrend. This stock is up about 10% on the week, looks poised for more upside. We can see the MACD and your RSI are both positive. Uh, I'm going to take a minute here and share with you some software stocks because we also need to, that are positive and are hot this week. But then we also need to take a look at what is not hot. But this is I, well, I was going to share with you the ETF for computer software stocks, IGV. And this is a very good quite simply uh, a bellwether way to get wrap your arms around how these computer software stocks are doing. And I'm going to go ahead and pull up a weekly to give you a bit more in the way of perspective. So it's up about one and a half percent, but I will tell you among the software, software stocks have been leading the markets for quite some time, for a good part of last year, now certainly this year. So now we're gonna go ahead and drill down to some of these outperformers. And a lot of these are stocks that are on my MEM Edge report. You can uh, certainly go to MEM Investment Research and uh, take a look uh, at that. But this is VEEV Viva Systems, really powerful outperformer. Stock continues to be in an uptrend. It's up about 2.6% on the week. But I also wanted to point out to you, uh, I don't have, I well, I'll tell you, if you put a 21 day simple moving average onto this, you'll see that the stock pulled right back to that. And that was your pullback opportunity for this very strong stock. This is a, a something definitely worth noting because these stocks will have these explosive moves. You're wondering when to get in. Oftentimes that pullback is gonna be your ideal opportunity. So there are a number of just one last computer software stock, and this is Splunk, S-P-L-K. And this stock really fell out of bed. It did not participate. I just showed you that IGV ETF. This one did not participate, but it has certainly reversed this downtrend, poised to break out, not as attractive to me as certainly there are any number of other stocks that have really just been outperformers for quite some time and poised for more upside. So let's go ahead. We certainly need to take a look at what is not hot. Uh, the first area in this space are going to be some beaten down retail stocks that are continuing to come under distribution. And this first one is a bit of a smaller company. It is a furnishing company. I'm bringing this up because Earlier to their drop here, this stock was a real darling, if you will. It doubled in price here, but since then it has totally fallen out of bed. This gap down here, weak earnings, very much in a confirmed downtrend. You can see as the stock attempts to reverse that downtrend, it's being met with resistance at these downward trending, simple moving averages. And this RSI very much negative, as is the MACD. 
D, we can take a look at another retailer that has had a bit of a tough go of late. It's L Brands. And we can see, actually, it is having a very nice day today. It was up 8.5% going into the day. So we're still down 5%. But this is this downtrend reversal for L Brands. The stock did pull back here to this 200 day simple moving average. So in fact, it could very well be today's advance could be the beginning of an uptrend after a nice orderly pullback to its 200 day simple moving average. Now let's go ahead and take a look at some of these healthcare stocks because Trump's action as far as his uh, pulling back from the uh, these Insurance, actually, we talked earlier about the healthcare insurance stocks that did well because Trump is no longer going to be pushing for these rebate providers to be uh, no longer in place. But a lot of these drug companies, they were declining on the news simply because now the drug pricing uh, issues and problems that are uh, that Trump wants these drug prices lower, these guys are going to come back into Target. So the first stock is Merck, MRK, big bellwether pharmaceutical stock, and we can see the RSI is trending down. Take a look at this. The stock broke below that 50-day simple moving average. Huge volume. This is telling you institutions want out. I will take you back to other periods where it broke below that 50. That is a very ominous sign big volume here and we can see that there was subsequent distribution and the stock really did not get back its footing for a couple of months so very negative we can take a look at a couple of other of these uh, larger drug stocks that are really not going to benefit from the uh, Trump's announcement. This is Bristol Myers. Really, we can see Bristol Myers was not healthy going into this announcement already. This downtrend reversal, finding resistance at these moving averages, and then gapping down further. I will tell you, this is not. Uh, this is an unhealthy healthcare stock with Bristol Myers. Certainly, within healthcare, there were some other stocks that faltered for other reasons. This is HIIQ. These guys provide a health insurance platform for corporations that want to offer healthcare options to their employees. The stock did attempt to reverse. They got caught in the crosshairs with that decline in a number of healthcare stocks as uh, Washington policy potentially came into play. They were in the throes of reversing that downtrend, but we can see subsequent to that, it's just too much in the way of headwinds and the stock is faltering. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of these consumer staple stocks that are down for the week. And a lot of these are going to be food related. The first one is Calmine Foods, not an attractive chart by any standard. We can see that the stock, again, another stock that attempted to downtrend their reversal tried to reverse their downtrend, but faltered. And the stock really is not in good shape. It's a bit overdone to the downside, but not anything, uh, not a train that I would get in front of. Let's just say that. Another food stock that also has not been doing well this year. That's Dean Foods, DF. Take a look at this really pronounced downtrend. It's been going on for almost a year now. So when these stocks break below these key simple moving averages, they're going to pull down these simple moving averages so that any time that a stock attempts to reverse, it will be met with resistance. And that has continued to be the story with this stock stock, you will need to see it break above all of these moving averages to pull everything back up. But for now, that downtrend is very firmly in place. One last name that we can go ahead and take a look at in these staples area is SJM. These guys did come out with earnings late uh, recently. Let's just see if we can go ahead and pull up. This is uh, Schmuckers, SJM Smucker. And we can see that this is another stock that is in a very pronounced downtrend. It's trading below these simple moving averages. These moving averages are being drawn downward. Your RSI is below that net neutral. Now your MACD is also in negative territory. The outlook for 
SJM is not constructive here. It continues to look really uh, very, very unhealthy and poised for more downside. And that is your what's hot and what's not. Ooh, Mary Ellen, I know <laughs> anybody who can go through those stocks faster than you can. And I just, um, like I talk about uh, Mary Ellen a lot, she's such a great storyteller. So there's always a, a lot of background every time you do those uh, charts. So I always love it. And I was not going to interrupt you. You were doing just fine. <laughs> All right, but it is time to move into the 10 and 10. And I know our producer has been gathering the symbols for me to annotate today. So I'm going to go ahead and get my screen all ready for you. And I know that the first symbol is going to be GH. And if I can get my fingers on the trigger here the right way. All right. So I'm going to be annotating these. Um, Tom usually does this. So uh, it's always fun for me to get another look at it. And everybody knows I have a slightly different uh, a different analysis process. So I do hope you enjoy this. Let me make this a bit wider for everybody. There we go. So I'm going to annotate these charts and then we have them in the Market Watchers live chart list at the, uh, I get those up usually by the end of the program, but today they will be immediately in there because I do have access to that chart list. So first thing I notice on Garden Health is this trading range that it has been in. Uh, what I would be concerned about if I were holding on to this stock is uh, the fact that twice we weren't able to get up here and test that overhead resistance. And you know the good news is that at least this top was higher than the previous one. So you're getting a pretty nice rise there. But again, I really, um, I would be a little concerned about that. But what is the big problem here? Uh, I would have to say it would be that PMO topping below the signal line. So I would keep an eye on that as well. I think volume has been uh, kind of meh, if you want to, if you want to go there, if that's a description. Uh, but it is, the OBV is starting to make some new highs. So we could be looking at a nice bounce if we get down here and test that support level at the 50 day EMA or even the support level at that low that we saw back here in June. So that would be my. Very uh, good. And the next one, um, next one is an ETF for the biotechs. It's IBB. Okay. I want to get this ready to go here. Six, uh, 11. And that way. Yeah, those biotechs had, are in fits and starts, but not really doing well overall, which is. So what was that one? I'm sorry. I. BB. Okay, I got it. Of course, the biotech e ETF. All right. Well, I think this one uh, is worrisome uh, right off the bat. And I'm going to show you, we have a double top here forming off of this previous uptrend. Uh, you want to see uh, you don't want to see it drop below the confirmation line. And what is going on right now? Uh, it's dropping below that confirmation line and is currently trading below that. Uh, notice that the PMO is turned negative. We're getting ready to have a PMO sell signal today. Uh, you know, we had, look at this, we even had a little warning from the OBV. We had declining tops here. And then what was going on right over here? rising tops and that kind of that's a negative divergence so really this one's pretty ugly um if you're i wouldn't buy it if i wouldn't hold it um if you really wanted to short it i suppose that's a possibility but shorting i think in a strong bull market is uh trying to swim against the uh swim against the current wouldn't you say yeah absolutely yeah I, uh, there are some biotechs that are doing well. It, there are 550 biotech stocks out there, and there's always more than a handful that are popping on any given day. Absolutely. This, uh, but the ETF right now, kind of stinky. Yeah. All right. Uh, the next one is having a great day. It's Neptune Wellness, N E P T. Got that. All right. Let's get this annotating going. All right. Um, you know, interesting move here in the breakout. Oh, gosh, I don't know. This is pretty volatile looking, honestly. Let me get a trend line here. You know, if you want to go just from the top down here, you know, we 
we didn't break out really, in my opinion. We, we crossed it, but it did what I call sometimes a drift uh, out of a um, pattern. And so even though we were looking at a declining trend, we did get that drift out, but not much happened. And the PMO during that period of time was dropping as well. So we, were, we weren't uh, getting the kind of information we would want uh, from the PMO. However, however, comma, right now we're getting that PMO buy signal. I think that looks pretty good. Uh, I would have to say that I would certainly hold on to this uh, as far as buying it goes. Uh, I think you might need that pullback. I think there is room to run here though, uh, but that's such a uh, strong rally to the upside. Uh, we are seeing a lot of accumulation here. So I think it has some room to move higher, but you might have to absorb a little bit of a, a decline before uh, getting up to that price target at $5.20. Yeah, and it is a smaller name. It's about a three hundred and eighty million dollar company, but it looks wow. interesting. Yep. Uh, next one is a is a much bigger name. It's a large foreign telecom stock, BCE. Nice five point one percent yielder. Okay, I just realized I'm putting the wrong date on all of these. <laughs> I think I even introduced the show with the the wrong one. So okay, MDB. No, uh, BCE. There we go. I jumped the gun. Mm -hmm. All right. There is our uh, PMO buy signal sitting here, right about there. PMO has been rather flat, but don't worry about that. And why do I say that? Let's look at, I'm going to actually highlight this period in time where we're getting that flat PMO, right? And I'll bring that down here. Uh, that's where the PMO is flattened out. But what's going on with price? It's still rising, isn't it? Uh, so, you know, normally you might be considering that as a uh, negative divergence. But in this case, when you look at the price action, the rise was very steady. You know, momentum measures acceleration. And so if you have your foot on the accelerator and you don't move it uh, higher or lower, then your acceleration stays about the same. And that's exactly what's going on here with the PMO. We are getting a breakout though. I like that look right there. It's trying to get out of that, um, out of this range right here. You could make a case also if I got out another trend line, let's go ahead and make that red. You also could make a case here for an ascending triangle. So we're getting that breakout that we want. I would say if you are holding it or if you have it, hold it. And if you haven't bought it, this could be certainly a possible investment choice to the upside. All right. Don't want to run out of that 10 minutes, but MDB, this is a software stock that's not really participating with the rest of the group. Okay, here we go. Move a little faster here. Ooh, don't like it, guys. Uh, here's some reason, reasons why PMO is turning down below the signal line. I'm seeing uh, this breakdown here from the, it never managed to hold on to that 20 day EMA. I'll just make this one a little more curved here. Rounded top. In the very short term, I'm not liking it, but you know, it could be worth the watch list just if it comes down here to test this short term support. But I'd really want to see an improvement here on the PMO. I would want it to start turning upward, uh, but currently it is moving lower. The good news is, I have to say, looking down here at the OBV, however, is we were getting a lot of accumulation here. And that is confirming that original uptrend. We're going to get a top here uh, today if we close lower, because that's how the OBV works. If it's a lower, if it closes lower, then all of that volume is uh, subtracted from the total. I would right. say if I was holding the, I would hold on to it in the intermediate term, but probably set my stop near that uh, low here. And if it's a shorter term investment and maybe about here at the 125 level for an intermediate term investment. Very good. Okay. And the next one is a semiconductor stock, analog devices, ADI okay. is the ticker. And here we go. All right. Uh, well, hmm. I think this one might be interesting to look at on a weekly chart. So I'm going to actually go back here. 
And the reason why is I'm, uh, I'm seeing, uh, well, let's just, I thought I had one in here. My handy dandy chart styles, DP weekly, that's what I want. Okay. Uh, here you go. So I wanted to look at it on the weekly chart just because I was getting a feel that this could be a flag, but I wanted to see it in perspective. I like that PMO buy signal. Of course, you just need to annotate. That's the whole point of this, isn't it? <laughs> All righty. There's that PMO buy signal on the weekly chart. Uh, you know, I think that's good. You could say, like I said, maybe a flag forming here. Yeah, let's get the arrow off of there or a pennant really. Um, but what I would honestly be a little bit concerned about here is if we don't make it above this overhead resistance right there, we didn't, we weren't able to hold it. It looks like it hit there and just pretty much immediately went down. But I would be worried about a possible double top here, one and two in the intermediate term. So uh, intermediate term, I, I don't think I would be getting into this. I don't think I'd count on that flag just yet. So uh, that would be my thoughts on ADI. Very good. Next one, uh, the stock's having a good day today. It's ADT. ADT. Let's get a few on here. Well, we need the regular chart because not enough data there. All right. Okay, let's go ahead and we'll start off with, uh, this looks like a trading range for sure that we are in. I think you can mark right in there. And it looks like we're heading back up to the top. I like that the PMO is about ready to pull out here above the zero line. I think that's positive. Uh, looking at the OBV and volume, pretty much flat, uh, not telling me too much there. Um, but you know, the thing I would be worried about at this point in time, and I'm gonna use this key. Uh, I would be a little concerned about the, the distance between the 50-day EMA and the 200-day EMA. Uh, the, when you see the 50 that be far below the 200-day EMA, it's got some work to do. It's in a bearish um, pattern. Um, it's a, a bearish configuration. And that's not something I like to see, but, uh, and it's not really broken out of that trading range and it just doesn't look like it will. I'm, I'm not a fan. Okay. And next one is a well-known stock, Pepsi, P-E-P. -E I think we voted on this one last week. Coke yes. And I think we uh, <laughs> gave it a thumbs down because we that's both right. drink Coke. <laughs> <laughs> Although you you admitted to not really drinking soda anymore, no, it's been it's been more than a few years. <laughs> right. Okay. So we have a PMO turning down below the signal line. Look at this OBV. Would have to say not what I would want to see. Um, moving lower. I mean, the price hasn't really broken down. It's kind of holding up at this point, despite that um, volume trend, which I suppose could be a little bit positive. Um, Scooter is starting to turn down but I think it is located uh, still in a, a pretty good healthy area, despite not being in the quote unquote hot zone. Uh, I would hold this, uh, if, I, I, if you wanna put on a watch list, I'd wait till it gets down and test the bottom of that trading range. And the next one we have is a biotech stock. It's AXGT. Okay. So my um, thoughts on the 10 and 10, if you haven't noticed, I want to give the sort of a buy, hold, sell recommendation one way or the other. I know a lot of you turn in your requests just for that reason. So that's why I'm trying to look at it in that way. So we have a nice rising trend here. Let me make that a little thicker and we don't need the arrow. Uh, and, you know, it's these biotechs are just a little bit too choppy for me. There's just a little bit too much volatility going on here. You know, we tried to break out. That was an excellent move. Um, I'm guessing it was earnings or some wonderful announcement. Um, but we came up here and you can see it matches up with this low back in April and we weren't able to hold it. Uh, I, I would say... I just, I'm not liking that part of it. There are some positives and one would be the fact the PMO is turning positive and it is now above the zero line. Look for that breakout. You know, it's staying above that 50 day EMA. It finally got above it. Um, you know, the EMAs are working in the right direction. I think if I owned it, I would still hold it just because of the fact we're still seeing some pretty good momentum 
uh, coming out of the PMO. Okay, and one more. Oh, hello, Mary Ellen. Hi. Uh, one more. I'm sorry. Yes, the last one. It's GE, General Electric. I know. It's just uh, the charts are so interesting. It's <laughs> sorry. Uh, you, I'm, I like <laughs> fell into my screen watching you. <laughs> right, right. Okay, so next up uh, looks just, I mean, we're seeing a lot of trading ranges here. And I'll give it in the shorter term, that trading range. In the longer term, though, you can see it's been in uh, this trading range. And right now we're getting ready to test the bottom of the trading range. It's sitting here on that 50-day EMA. The PMO is turned lower and is on a sell signal. So personally, um, I would watch very closely if I were holding it short term. I would want it to hold on to that $10 range. Uh, you can see there was a gap back here. It was covered um, when it came back down. And I, so $10 range, uh, maybe go down to the nine if you're looking at an intermediate term investment. Um, you know, but overall, I'm not really impressed with the look of this one. Uh, so I, I wouldn't be buying it, um, but I certainly could see uh, holding it. All righty, and that is it. And that completes the 10 and 10. These symbols that I just looked at are annotated and are already in the Market Watchers live chart list. All you have to do is go to the articles tab right here, uh, and then you go into your um, Market Watchers live blog. All right, we're going to be back with two really exciting segments, uh, so stay tuned. Today's market volatility provides savvy traders and active investors with an abundance of profitable opportunities. At the Traders Expo Chicago, July 21st through 23rd, dozens of the most respected traders in the world, including Rick Santelli, John Najarian, Tom Sosnoff, Linda Rashke, and Ralph Acampora, will explain how they're adapting their strategies and share the specific trading opportunities they've identified in equities, commodities, forex, futures, and cryptocurrencies. Claim your free pass to join them at ChicagoTradersExpo.com. All right, let's take a look at what the market is up to right now. Try and get get this updated for you. There it is. Excellent. All right. So what we're looking at right now, of course, is uh, all of the major indexes. Dow is currently up 150 points. Does look like it may have plateaued here, traveling mostly sideways since the nice big move in the morning. S&P 500 is still trending upward, though, uh, continuing to make all-time highs. We can see NASDAQ is also making a nice move to the upside. It is up over 37 points right now, or 0.45%. New York Stock Exchange in general, really uh, consolidating sideways. So larger caps seem to be doing fairly well here. Um, but overall, the NYSE moving mostly sideways. Uh, we are up only 0.13%. This is what I really like seeing. Mid caps are taking off. They are looking really good right now uh, with a move up 16 points. Russell 2000 also making a nice move, but it does seem to have stalled out just a little bit here, but could be forming an intraday flag. TNX treasury yields are starting to move a bit lower since this morning we were looking at them rising. Current reading is 2.118%. VIX continues to fall. We're seeing a reading of 12.48. Look at the dollar continuing to slide after that late afternoon slide yesterday, continuing lower down five cents, reading $26.19. GLD is on the rise. USO is mostly unchanged, as is the bond, as are bonds. All right. Uh, that's all I have for your final market update. I think we should just pop on into our first segment, segment Mary Ellen. Oh, that sounds like a plan. All right. So tops and bottoms, do you want to go ahead and start and then I'll finish? All righty. <clears throat> Pardon me, please. Yes, let's uh, give a little bit of a background as to what we are going to be reviewing today. We're going to be taking a look at stocks that appear to have been topping. So let me go ahead and share my screen and I'll show you about four stocks that hit my radar screen as looking rather ominous, if you will. This first name is SAFM, and I talked earlier about these consumer staple stocks that are struggling. 
This is Sanderson Farms. So we can see the stock realistically topped back here in May, but I'm bringing it up today because this reversal attempt, I talked about this earlier, stocks in a confirmed downtrend, attempts to reverse finds resistance at a downward trending 50-day simple moving average. This is absolutely classic. Now I will say it looks a bit overdone to the downside, but not very healthy. Your RSI is negative, as is your MACD. Never got up above that net neutral zero. The next candidate that I have is also in consumer staples. This is a mixed bag grouping where some stocks, uh, Procter & Gamble and others, are really taking off. But then there are the laggards, and this is Tootsie Roll, TR. And it's another name that also peaked back here in June. Very similar dynamics where it had this significant downtrend about a one month period, attempted to reverse, found resistance at this downward trending 50 day simple moving average and is continuing to decline. So it's a little bit again, done overdone on the downside, but your downtrend is very much firmly in place. Another stock that we can look at is also in the consumer discretionary, uh, just consumer staple area. It's a pet food company and FRPT, it's fresh pet is the name of the stock and we can see it was really doing quite well it looked really quite attractive here gapped up but since then has fallen out of bed and is just trending upward it would need to break up above that 50 day before turning even potentially constructive and then the last stock that i have here is funko this is a stock that aaron and i have talked about they they make these model plastic pieces that are about five inches tall they're all the rage of their numbers are super good stock. We can see on this attempted breakout, it pulled back and failed. So I would say suggest that potentially this could have been a near term top and the RSI is trending down. Your MACD had that negative crossover poised to go below this net neutral zero. So those are my top stocks uh, as far as names that could have uh, or near term topping. Mm. Excellent. Okay. Uh, you did your tops. I guess I will go ahead and do my tops and then we'll look at some bottoms. Sure. All right. So these were uh, a couple of the stocks. I had three stocks that I thought were looking rather toppy, as uh, I like to call it. Netflix, you know, it's a strong performer, has really uh, generally done well, but it has been really in a consolidation zone uh, trading range. Real, since I would say January, uh, we've made, you know, we made some new highs here, but overall moving sideways. And what worries me is, it, you know, we should have seen this move right here. Uh, we should have seen it at least uh, break out there. It's turning over. And you can see that also that PMO is beginning to turn over as well. So I think Netflix is starting to look a little toppy as we say. Uh, the other one was Abbott Laboratories. I thought this one's looking rather toppy as well. I think we had some warning. The PMO had made uh, was starting to trend lower despite price moving higher. Uh, the OBV didn't help out too much though. I'm going to say uh, the fact that rising bottoms were confirming the rising bottoms that we saw back here. Uh, however, I think the PMO is giving us a little bit of uh, an advantage and the scooter as well has started to move down out of the hot zone. Say the other top that looked interesting to me is Thermo Fisher Scientific. And when I looked at this one, I saw a possible head and shoulders uh, forming up here. We did get a gap down. It's dropped below that 20 day EMA and a pretty clear PMO sell signal. Notice also, OBV confirming the downtrend and the scooter pretty much uh, moving out of that hot zone. So those are the tops I had. Did you have a couple bottoms you wanted to share? I do, yes. And of course, these are going to be stocks that appear to be, in essence, reversing their downtrends. So we're looking for potential bottoms in these stocks. And the first stock I'm going to share with you is ADS Alliance Data Systems. And you can see that this stock has been for almost a year in a very confirmed downtrend. What I like about it here very near term is the fact that it has now broken up above this green 10 day as well as that red 50 day simple moving average shorter term moving average up through the longer that's a golden cross your macd just popping up above that net neutral zero into positive territory and your rsi trending upward and above that 50 
very constructive looking. It's trading at about 149. I would look for resistance at that 200 day simple moving average, which would take it to 171. But that's still a nice 10 plus percent move that you could potentially anticipate over the near term. Another stock that has a appearance of potentially bottoming. The ticker is ALB. This is Albert Marl. And a very similar concept where, uh, although they're downtrend, it is taking us back to last fall. Again, that downtrend reversal met with resistance at that downward trending 200 day. But here we are in the current position. It has broken up above these shorter term simple moving averages, both the 10, the 50, same dynamic with that golden cross. Stock's poised to break out of a one month base. We're getting a nice uptick today. So near term appears to have bottomed. We're at 72. Again, be on the lookout for how it behaves at that 200 day. You don't want it to be met, met with resistance. That's going to be your stop at 82. RSI is positive, as is the MACD. We can take a look at another stock in an entirely different area. This is a retailer, Dick's Sporting Goods, DKS, one of the last few sports wear retailers standing. And uh, we can see that the stock is also poised to break out of a base. It's having a significant move today. It's up about 3%, but it is poised to break out of this six week base. If we were to see any kind of a pickup on the volume, that would be really significant. We can see that this MACD just turned up above this net neutral zero into positive territory. And then your RSI continues to be up above that 50 and trending upward. We can take a look at one other name and it's ELY is the ticker symbol. Another leisure, this is a golf uh, Callaway Golf Company, ELY. And I think you'll see a bit of a theme here, but uh, realistically, it's because these, when you're looking for turnarounds, you're looking for bottoms, these are the dynamics that you want to have in place. And that is the stock is now above this simple moving average. We can see uh, the downtrend reversal was met with resistance back here in the middle of June. Now we've broken up above it. We're getting some really decent volume. It's breaking out of about a one week base. RSI is positive, MACD up here in positive territory. This stock has room to run. And then there actually was one other one that I listed, AMN. It's a healthcare stock, uh, not quite as dynamic looking. I'm going to need to see a little more in the way of uh, action. I want this stock to break up further. I want more volume. It's still a little placid looking, but keep it on your radar screen. And those are my bottoms. All right. I have three real quick for you and then we'll move into our happy hour. <laughs> I'm looking at these are uh, looking nice the way that they are moving. Now these, some of these would be considered what you call bottom fishing. And I would say this is one of them. We got the PMO buy signal back here. We're getting building momentum, even though price isn't doing a whole lot. And now we're getting the breakout above the 20 day EMA. We are staying above it like that. I think that uh, Capri holding CPRI looks pretty good there. Macy's I also think is bottoming and apparel retailers have had a really uh, bad time here. Uh, but I like this PMO turning up above the signal line. You can see rising bottoms on that PMO. Volume is a little suspect granted, but these are the kind of things that I would be looking for on a bottom. And right now you could make a case in the very short term for a double bottom uh, forming right here on Macy's. And finally, Teva Pharmaceutical. And what you can see there is a possible reverse head and shoulders in the making. Uh, I'd still want to see a little bit more action here on the upside, but we do see that the PMO is trying to rise and we are holding now above that 20 day EMA. So those were the bottoms I had. And here is the list of the tops and bottoms that we just looked at. And I think it's time to move on into happy hour. And I am ready for a oh, happy hour. <laughs> that's right. Did you want to get started or? Sure, I'll go ahead and start yes. it off. Um, right ahead. Well, I can tell you that my weekend, uh, tomorrow I have my high school reunion. Uh, it's, I, it is my 35th, giving away my age just a little bit. Uh, so my preparation for this weekend, well, first of all, it was going to Kohl's for a dress, right? <laughs> so I'm going to look at Kohl's Corp. And, you know, right now it's starting to bottom nicely. We looked at Macy's, a really similar chart, reverse head and shoulders. 
could see a breakout now above that neckline. So I'm liking the looks of that one. Of course, I need makeup as well. So I'm going to look at Ulta. And I'm getting that PMO buy signal. So I like that. PMO is trying to pop, or I mean, the scooter's trying to pop up above that hot zone line. And we're getting a tiny little breakout above overhead resistance. And I think your upside potential is pretty decent here at that June top. Uh, after that, I would have to say, I know I'm going to have a cocktail or two. So I'm going to look at Constellation Brands. And this stock's looking all right. You know, you've got the PMO buy signal. It's been, uh, you know, really consolidating sideways, but you can see it's starting to make a move to the upside. My only concern is that it could look like um, it, it could be a rising wedge, but more often and or more often, more likely I would see it as a consolidation zone and look for the next move to the upside. And finally, I'm gonna finish with Philip Morris, uh, not to give away any of my vices, but yes, uh, I will be um, enjoying that at the reunion as well. I have a PMO buy signal coming in here. We are getting just uh, now seeing that positive PMO, which I very much like. You can see that this has been bottoming. And now we are above the, we've managed, we got above the 20, uh, we got above the 200 here, and now we're waiting for that 50 to cross above the 200. And notice that nice scooter move going as well. If you wanted to look at uh, some overhead resistance, I would draw it right here at those lows, but also that 200 day EMA I think was really critical and we got that breakout. So what's up with, with you for happy hour this week? Yeah, so I'm going to start uh, probably later today, maybe, uh, what do they say, it's ha always happy hour somewhere, but uh, the first stop is going to be Wingstop. I have not uh, gone there, but I understand they have some great chicken wings. They've It's one of the few, really the outperformer in the restaurant space outside of maybe Starbucks, but Wingstop has been in a real uptrend. The company is growing. They are opening stores uh, throughout the U.S. and actually globally as well. So we can see during this period where the stock consolidated, the MACD kind of trended downward, but it's still up above this zero. RSI is positive. Stock continues to find support. So anytime this stock pulls back to that 10-day simple moving average, it's a buy. So those wings might be pretty hot. So I am going to want to have a beer with that, a brewski. <laughs> <laughs> and I see this, where that's going. Just yep. like me. <laughs> <laughs> so this is Boston Beer, S-A-M. Take a look. The stock has really, uh, the company has introduced a number of craft beers that are being met with delight. Uh, sales are improving. But more recently, the stock is coming out of this one and a half week period of a flat base. Today, it's breaking out above that very bullishly. And we can see this is another time when a stock has an uptrend, pulls back to the 10-day, uptrend pulls back, 10-day is your buy point, but very much in a confirmed uptrend. And while I'm hanging out having uh, the wings and beer, I might just want to take a look at my Twitter see what's going on. What the heck is Trump saying these days? <laughs> Do you so, really want to know? <laughs> yes. And, and here we are. Uh, this is Twitter. The stock gapped up here, good numbers, user numbers, and so forth, pulled back, now is seemingly forming the right side of a base in bullish fashion, RSI trending upward, MACD just coming up above that net neutral zero. Look for the stock to continue to form the right side of that base with a potential breakout at 41. Wow. So yeah, it looks like a, this weekend's going to be a lot of fun for us. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Although you always wonder with the reunions, you know, is that I, I think it's going to be a fun time. I'm looking forward to seeing a lot of people that are coming into town because uh, I moved Fine. back home. I'm, I'm back in the town I graduated high school from. Wow, I'm sure it'll be a lot of fun just to see now. How did that football quarterback, uh, how does he stack up these days? I know, <laughs> I did end up with the quarterback. Uh, you oh. know, there is, there is uh, hope for you wallflowers and uh, tech <laughs> nerds like myself. I did end up with the quarterback, uh, well, of the junior high, but still. <laughs> uh, that still counts, still counts. Quarterback still nonetheless. So here are the uh, symbols that we did go over during happy hour. Hope you enjoyed that. A uh, little bit of insight into the kind of plans we have for the weekend. 
So I thought that, of course, we're going to move into that poll. And, you know, I hope a lot of you took it. I, I noticed we had a little bit less in the way of participants. But what I found really interesting is, number one, nobody went with William Lyons Holmes. Nobody. And I have to say, I think that was the lowest on my list. Um, Pulte and Meritage, Meritage Holmes Corp look good, according to our uh, viewers. What, what did you pick? Uh yeah, actually, we talked about these home builders earlier, and a number of them are looking constructive. I really like that DHI. It's poised to break out of a nice base here, and it's having a wonderful day, but uh, MTH is a little more constructive. I would look for a pullback, but it looks to be really quite positive. It's hitting a new high today, gapped up. 2%, nice volume. So I think I would go with that one. Oh all right. Gosh. Well, I put these all in a candle glance because I just, I'm, I'm addicted to candle glance. If uh, those of you who <laughs> watch the show probably know, and it's mainly because I get up, I, I set up my own. And so it has my PMO on it. it, gives me a really quick view of the price action for the last three months. And when I took a look at this, the two that really um, struck me as uh, good performers were Meritage Homes and Pulte Group. And so, I, of course, we have the buy signal here. Pulte is just now making that buy signal. So if we look at these charts real quick, so Meritage Homes, really nice breakout here. And what I did, and you can uh, let Tom know, I'll let him know, is I did look at his relative strength charts that he does. And look at how home builders are doing. They're having a pretty decent time, but boy, uh, Meritage Homes uh, with the home builders really making a move also against the S&P. And uh, so I like that. But if you look also, at Pulte, which was the other one I thought was very interesting, where we're just starting to get that move to the upside. Scooter is just starting to move up close to that hot zone. We're seeing higher tops on the OBV now. Honestly, I preferred this one when I did my look, but also look at the relative strength on this one. I liked it because I thought they had a more upside potential. It hadn't gotten quite as extended as far as the PMO is concerned. Look at how it is performing against those home builders uh, in that industry group. I think that's great. Uh, we're starting to see some improvement against the S&P as well. Uh, you know, the, you can see home builders in general haven't been performing that great in comparison, but I thought those two looked fairly good. Uh, what, any thoughts? Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, both PHM and MTH are your relative outperformers, and that's what you want to be. Those are the names you want to be involved in, those that break out first. They are going to be your leadership stocks. Should the group continue to do well, they're going to continue to be your outperformers. But look for a pullback. They're a bit extended, just, just a touch, but very, very bullish looking. You know, this one was the one nobody picked. Uh, I do have the buy signal coming in on it, but we don't have the breakout yet. That's something that bothered me. It's been moving mostly sideways. Yes, it has a decent scooter. I mean, it's been in that hot zone during this consolidation period. Uh, and when you looked at the relative chart for it, just not a, as good a numbers here going on, mostly flat against the, um, it's the benchmarks. So, you know, I thought that was interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, looking at the fact that really we didn't get many votes for that at all. All righty. Well, yesterday it was the boys club and today uh, we had uh, the la ladies. <laughs> ladies first. Yes. So I had a great time uh, with you, Mary Ellen. Mary Ellen, I think you're going to come back uh, with me next week. I'll be that. there. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, we're going to have so much fun. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I would like to thank you for being here in particular, Mary Ellen, for what's hot, what's not. And then, of course, I'm going to thank all of you out there for joining us today on Market Watchers. Please remember to complete that survey as you exit. We really do read all of those survey comments. So let me know what you think, especially Mary Ellen and I together. And then as a quick reminder, Market Watchers Live does air five days a week, Mondays through Fridays, noon to 1.30 p.m.
I hope you come back on Monday. Happy trading.